Hello and welcome to my video, Keep Psalms and Carry On, Seeking Solace in the Psalms. In this video, I will offer you a psalm to focus on and to enjoy, to bring peace and meditation into your own Christian walk. I offer the video not so much to explain the psalm, but to enjoy it as a tool of meditation, to find calm and peace in God's word. Let's begin with a prayer. Our Lord and Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you bestow upon us. Bless us now with clarity and with strength of mind. Bless us with serenity and the capacity to know you and feel your presence in us. Be with us now as we meditate upon the word you have given us. It is in your Son's most holy name that I pray. Amen. So I'm going to go into Psalm 37 today. And in this psalm, there is a lot here, so you can use this as a deep meditation or just take small parts for smaller meditations. So let's look at this. The first few verses assure us not to be upset at the evildoers who our world seems to show as reaping great rewards. They will be cut down, so don't waste your energy envying them. The next verses fill us with positive thoughts. Look at the verbs here. Trust, do good, dwell, and feed, delight, commit, trust, rest. And look at the promises that God gives us here. He shall give you the desires of your heart. He shall bring forth the righteousness as the light your justice as the noonday. The key is to wait patiently. Then we are reinforced about the uselessness of fretting those who prosper from evil. We need to cease anger. We need to forsake wrath. And again, do not fret. And here's why. It only causes you harm. Let it go. Wait, wait on the Lord for just a little while and the wicked won't be anymore. And here is the verse that Jesus himself used in his famous sermon. The meek shall inherit the earth and there will be delight. So it goes on, if we look at the next column, so Instead of fretting over the plots of the wicked, we need to follow the example of the Lord. What does he do? He laughs at this wicked person. We need to be assured that this wicked man's day is coming. His drawn sword against the poor and the needy, it will go right into his own heart. His bow of evil shall be broken. And look at this verse here. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. Think on that one. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. The next verse assures us who are upright, we will have an inheritance that will be forever. We will have nothing to be ashamed of. We will be satisfied in days of famine. What will happen to the evildoers? They will vanish into the smoke. What makes us the righteous? We show mercy and we give, unlike the wicked who just borrow without repaying. The next verses give us Further assurance, the Lord orders our steps, brings order to this path we go on. He delights in what we do. And when we fall, we will not be completely cut down. We can rise again. And then David gives his own perspective as an older man. He's seen this through the perspective of his years. He's never seen the righteous forsaken or descendants begging for bread because the Lord loves justice. 
This is assurance that he will preserve you forever if you remain righteous. And what is the reward? You will inherit the land. You will dwell in it forever. So how do you be the righteous? This psalm outlines that. Speak wisdom. Talk of justice. Keep God's law in your heart. Don't let your steps slide, because certainly this path can be pretty slippery. He acknowledges that the wicked are jealous of those righteous and will try to tear you down. Use this psalm to find assurance that the Lord will not leave you in his hand. And again, he repeats that the wicked will be cut off, assures you that you will see it. And finally, David interjects himself again, saying that he has seen the wicked in great power, spreading himself like a great native tree. Yet, he tells us, he was no more. Even when he looked for him, he was gone. This psalm finishes the last verses, telling us to take the mark of the blameless man. Mark him. Look at him. Observe the upright. This is where we need to focus. Not the wicked who will be cut off from his future. And if you get nothing else from this psalm, take this verse. He is their strength in time of trouble. He will save you. He will deliver you. Why? Because you put your trust in him. This is difficult. It's hard when you see wickedness winning out in the world. But even more so, that's when you have to put your full trust in the Lord. And perhaps this psalm will remind you of that. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the thumbs up button at the bottom and check out our YouTube page for the Northfield Church of Christ and you will find live streams of our Sunday morning worship services, our Sunday morning Bible studies, and a Sunday evening service conducted by our minister, Mark. So, until next time, keep Psalms and carry on.